All right, we talked about water being a good solvent. And what we're going to look at now has to do with what kind of solutions um, can form. So what happens when a solution forms? That's something I want to discuss. There are three different types of compounds that can dissolve into water. Um, ionic compounds are things composed of ions. So you always have a cation, which is some kind of a positive ion. And you have an anion, which is negative. So a couple of different examples would include this one. This is probably the most common example. Um, when you put this into water, this is sodium chloride or table salt, you'll get sodium ions and chloride ions. And when those dissolve, those are in solution, aqueous solution. Okay, K3PO4, uh, it could also be called a salt. When that goes into water, it's going to split apart into potassium ions, which are aqueous, and we'll also get phosphate ions. Now when you look at how many of each you get, here you get three. Last, or I'm sorry, next, here we have a molecular compound. This would be something that's made up of nonmetals only. And here we don't have ions. So sugar would be an example. And the formula for sugar would be C12H22O11. This is actually sucrose. When sucrose dissolves into water, which it does dissolve, it does not ionize. It just breaks apart into smaller pieces, and we get individual molecules that are now floating around in aqueous solution. This could happen with any molecular compound. It would just go from its initial state of matter, here a solid, to aqueous. But we, whatever we have in the beginning, we have in the end. An acid is a molecular compound that behaves like an ionic compound. Acids have H and then some kind of anion, whatever that anion is. Let's say we have H2SO4. When that goes into solution, when it behaves like an acid, this is called sulfuric acid. And a reminder to you, if you um, haven't looked at your acid names in a while, please review those naming rules. Acids will donate a hydrogen ion, and then it will leave behind whatever else there is. So we're always going to have one of these to every one of what's left over. That's the way acids always work when they are going into solution. Now, types of solutions that conduct a current are called electrolytes. And if you have a strong electrolyte, it means that the bulb is shining very brightly and it contains many ions. So this is for very soluble ionic compounds. Now some ionic compounds are not very soluble, just so you know. Um, and this would also be for um, strong acids. Okay, next would be weak electrolytes. And they only conduct the bulb a little bit. They contain a few ions. This would be um, slightly soluble compounds or slightly soluble ionic compounds. CMPDS is what I use for compounds or weak acids. And the last thing would be a non-electrolyte. This has no ions present. Um, this would be molecular compounds. Compounds. So this parallels what we saw in our last slide. All right, so if it conducts a current, it is an electrolyte, either strong or weak, depending on if it has many ions or just a few. If it does not conduct a current at all, there are no ions present. It's called a non-electrolyte. Strong electrolytes dissociate completely to give ions in solution that conduct electrical current. Soluble salts, strong acids, and strong bases act as strong electrolytes in solution. Weak electrolytes dissociate to a small extent to give only a few ions in solution available to conduct electrical current. Weak acids and bases are the most common weak electrolytes. Non-electrolytes are molecular species that do not dissociate into ions in solution. There are no ions available to conduct electrical current. Molecular compounds like alcohols and sugars are examples of non-electrolytes.